Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. This is episode number 552. And tonight, oh boy, have we got a fun show for you. You know why? Why? Jeff decided that it's, it's important to work. And so he's working tonight. And so we decided that we need to make it so that we have so much fun that he regrets that decision for a very long time. <laughs> I hope you're watching. Oh, my friends, my friends. Oh, I want... Can I, can I show them? Am I allowed to show them? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can show them. Ah! We're going to be looking at a retro pie gaming system that will fit with any decor and will throw you back to the 1980s. We're going to do it ourselves, and we're going to do it on the cheap using a Raspberry Pi 3 model B plus and free software. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Sasha, before we get into the show, before we jump into it, happy birthday this weekend. <gasps> Thank you. Just yeah. needed to say it. Happy birthday. Thank this you. Is for, this is for you. No, it's not. Oh. It's for me. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to show you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> this is Category 5 Technology TV. Live recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, Plex, and other HLS video players for local showtimes. Visit our website, Category 5. TV. Category 5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. Welcome to the show. I'm going to have to put that down for just a minute, but then I'm going to get it back out again. Hey, I'm Robbie. I'm Sasha. How are you? Lots to cover this week. We've got a jam-packed show for you. Just a reminder, Category 5 TV shirts are still available. Thank you to everyone who has purchased one so far. Head on over to cat5.tv slash shirts to get yours. And incidentally, uh, we are just waiting to receive your photographs. Right, yes. Right? Totally take a picture of yourself. You know what? A category you five could shirt. take a picture of yourself in your new Category 5 shirt, and then when you're emailing contest at Category 5 TV. Oh, yeah. include it? Yeah. Oh, wow. We're like cross-promoting cross the contest here, Because folks. then you would have the shirt on, and also you'd have a chance to win Dead Effect 2 VR. Oh, you would probably totally win that. You would win it immediately. If you, yeah, if you were wearing <laughs> one of our shirts, we'd just be like... You got it. You right. got it, buddy. Um, also, um, Category 5 TV is now on Google Play Music. You can get there through our website, or you can just search for Category 5 on Google Play, of course. Uh, but if you want to see what other ways that you can tune into the show, if you go to category5.tv slash subscribe, you'll be able to, uh, to see that. And there's a little mm -hmm. Google Play icon next to our show, and you can tune in through Google Play Music, which is cool because it's like a podcast, so you can listen to That's it right. on, uh, during the commute or when you're when you're riding the train or you can pre-download it and prepare yourself for uh, for the sweet smooth tones of our voices <laughs> that's right now i don't have to do my hair anymore i know we right? just turn off the camera half of the half of the time we're spending half hour before the show trying to figure out how to make the camera go yeah. so you know we just we just turn it right off yeah. we just there that, that, that's the show from here on in so <laughs> welcome to category 5 tv thank you for tuning in this see that's perfect actually at my work they always say oh you you would be so great on the radio which i don't know that that's actually a compliment when people say that yeah it's it seems a little bit not a compliment that's that's that, that could be taken two ways yeah you you might want to try kicking them and then see how they respond and be like what there's a compliment. What's wrong with my face? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do TV. Exactly. I'm on cable and everything. Uh, speaking of cable, mm -hmm. uh, or not cable, but definitely TV and entertainment, uh, have you noticed that they have made a remake on Netflix of Lost in Space? I have noticed. I have not watched. You've noticed, but you haven't watched? No. How could you, you possibly have. notice that this is a thing and not watched? You've been busy doing other things. I have been busy with, with my VR headset from my awesome computer, right? Well, Dave's. 
awesome computer. <laughs> so you're doing VR rather than watching Lost in Space. You need oh, to yeah. you need to budget your time in such a way that you can do both. It's a little bit ridiculous. It's very it's very hard. And if any of you are watching and you have a VR headset, it means you're doing a great job budgeting your time by taking your headset off to watch the show. Maybe you're watching <laughs> us in VR space. That's right. Maybe we're on a TV in your pristine VR living room. Which you can do. I have a VR living room. It is fantastic it's beachside nice oceans i'm i we're really enjoying it anyways yeah. uh, okay, the, yes. the one the one mistake if you will that we made in watching lost in space is that we included one of my children in it and she loves it and we all love it but now mm-hmm. i feel like I have to wait until Saturday when I can watch another episode. Right. I want to just sit down and watch the next episode. Well, let's hope she behaves all of the time. Because I feel like TV is one of the things as a parent you take away when children are misbehaving. And now you cannot do that because you want to watch <laughs> This it. is my show. You better, you better, be, better good. be good, kiddo. <laughs> No, but it's, it's uh, we've watched the first two episodes. I've, I've enjoyed it anyways. And, and having watched the show as a very young person, like, um, like my youngest child's age, like yeah. seven, eight years old kind of idea, um, it's definitely different. But I love, I, I wanted to see how they would interpret the ideas, the concepts behind the show Lost in Space in a, in a technological world that we live in where right. CGI is a, is a thing. I'm really eager to watch it. I'm very eager. It's been really good so far. Now, two episodes in, really enjoying it. If good. you've seen it, let us know what you think. Have you binged it? Have you watched the whole thing? No spoilers, but tell us uh, what you think of the show. Another show that I'm looking forward to that I have not started yet is Legion Season 2. I've mentioned Legion before. Yes. We've tried kind of the superhero spinoffs and, and these kinds of shows and never liked them. Like, The Flash was... I wanted it to be good, but the mm-hmm. dialogue was valley, like in the way that it's like it's like written for kids. Mm-hmm. It seems like it, I don't know what the writers are, what the target demographic is, but it, it felt like the the dialogue was like juvenile. Juvenile. That's mm-hmm. a really good word. And so we couldn't get into it. So this one, Legion, really felt like, hey, they've really done something cool here. There's a lot of character development, which you don't get in a lot of those kind of action, like uh, fantasy right. shows with, with superheroes and things. So, um, and it's trippy. It's really trippy. Ah, I need to get myself into that because I never watched Legion season one. And now that there's two seasons, I really we actually enjoyed season one. I really actually enjoy waiting. I, I like to binge watch, right? So I mm-hmm. like to accumulate a couple of seasons in a show before okay. I actually invest my time into it. There's nothing I dislike more now that I have the ability. There's nothing that I dislike more than waiting week by week for a show. Hmm. So I like now that whole seasons get released. Right. So now that there's two seasons, that actually is more enticing to me. Okay. Yeah. We don't binge, but we do, like with Lost in Space, we watched the first two episodes in the same night because that was like a two-hour movie uh, to, to do that. So, But mm-hmm. then it'll be like one a week kind of thing. That's, that's the plan, I think. So, right. Some, yeah. Something to look forward to. Yeah. Let us know what you're watching, what you're enjoying. Lots of great shows coming out this, this season. Um, Quickly, yes. over the past few weeks, there have been some changes with cryptocurrency like Monero and TurtleCoin. If you've been mining these coins, Mm -hmm. the algorithm has changed. So what does that mean as far as... There's a thing called an ASIC. Okay. And I wrote it down so that I wouldn't mess up what the acronym stands for. Application Specific Integrated Circuit. Okay. And what an ASIC is, is... um, Manufacturers, pe- companies that want to mine lots of cryptocurrency, will create chips, dedicated circuits that are designed to mine specific currencies. Okay. So this is what happened to Bitcoin. Bitcoin was easy to mine at first for consumers like right. us and on traditional hardware, on our CPUs and GPUs. But then the ASICs came along, and because they are designed specifically to mine that cryptocurrency, and they're so much faster at it and so much more powerful than our consumer gear, because that's their one thing that they do, Right now all of a sudden, Bitcoin is unattainable for someone like myself. So Monero and TurtleCoin both are currencies that are 
trying to combat the ASIC and saying, we do not want ASIC on our network. Oh, okay. So we want people to be able to mine this currency um, on consumer gear. Right. TurtleCoin is very particular about wanting to have people like you and I able to mine TurtleCoin. Right. So when the ASICs came out that mined Monero and TurtleCoin, mm-hmm. which happened just recently, like a few weeks ago, right. um, they changed the algorithm so that those chips no longer work on the network so because the 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 question that the that the miner has to answer will go unanswered it just it yeah. doesn't interpret it exactly yeah. okay so now what do we do then is it just a simple update to- yeah you need to reinstall your mining software oh, reinstall okay. your wallet reinstall like turtle coin d and your monero daemon uh if mm-hmm. you're if you're syncing the blockchain and basically what it means to you is if you've been mining in the past you have to reinstall or upgrade your software um, the easiest way like if you're using cat5 tv dash miners for example um, it's a cool way that you can support category 5 tv because a portion of the mining that you do goes to supporting mm-hmm. us. So uh, you can get that at cat5.tv slash miners and there's more information there. There's a great installer uh, script that you just run and it will remove the old version, install the new and upgrade you and get you up and running. So if you're reinstalling your wallet, you're not losing the stuff that was in your wallet. I'm talking minor. Minor, okay. Right now, but the wallet Okay. Is the so- what I mean by that is reinstalling it is the software that, oh, okay, that allows yeah, you so. to access your wallet. If you don't upgrade and you get payments somebody pays you or you're mining and you're getting payouts Mm -hmm. you will not you will not see them in your wallet and you'll be like why am i not getting any any turtle coin right (laughs) monero right um so then it's because your wallet the old version of the wallet can no longer understand the current version of the algorithm in the blockchain okay so uh so it's important that you upgrade your miner so that you can continue mining and your wallet and your your blockchain daemon if you want to be able to see your currency to answer your question no you won't lose anything you don't need to you don't need to change anything because your your wallet is just your ability to access your crypto coin your right. your how much you have okay. but the information itself is stored in the blockchain right so okay. even if you scrap your entire computer reinstall everything install the software from scratch as long as you know your your public and private keys for your for your um, for your wallet, you then, can regenerate it okay. because it will sync it from the blockchain. Right. So the blockchain is like the ultimate backup, but you have to have your keys. You have to have your keys. Mm-hmm. That I know. Yes. Okay. Another quick one before we take a break. Yes. I wanted to share this because I know a lot of you uh, viewers run your own websites. Um, maybe you even in business are in charge of maintaining websites. Mm-hmm. And there's a really interesting and smart, clever, but potentially dangerous piece of uh, bot spam malware that's going around right now. It's very, very interesting. When we build a website, Mm -hmm. we tend to link to other websites. Right. Okay. So Category 5 TV, for example, if somebody blogs about us or talks about us, I might, if I know about it, I might link to it from Category 5 TV's website so that our viewers can find it and, and read it. Right. That makes sense. In a business, you've got your business site. You're linking to your partners. You're linking to your suppliers. You're linking to your customers, maybe, in testimonials and things like that. Right. Right? Here's an example. Think about that. You're linking to your customers. So what this bot spam does is it spiders through the internet. It finds your website, and it looks for two things. Okay. One, the title of your website. Because the title of your website quite often is what? Your company name. Yeah. Right? So Category 5 TV Network. Mm -hmm. That's the title of my website. And two, all the exit links on my website. Now, with my title, it goes to every exit link on my website and it finds the contact information on that website be they emails be they online forms that get submitted to, to the receptionist or whatever and what it does now is so it has an association that says category 5 tv network is associated with this customer say okay Okay. so say one of our customers say jabiz all right so somebody that we've we've worked with and done reviews for so we link to their website so now 
it's gone over to the Jabiz website and it's found all of the links to their emails and it mass mails a single email to each contact and through the contact us form and everything and looks like it's coming from category 5 TV network okay because remember oh, it got that yes. in the first step mm -hmm. it looks like it's coming from the category 5 TV network they say oh we know who that is right so auto automatically we've got some recognition there and an automatic trust it says that they owe this amount of money and here's the invoice no. and um, if you do not pay immediately we're going to be putting you through to collections which would work sometimes which would work because yes. then that customer of mine is getting a, an, a past due invoice notice from me from category 5 tv network that looks like it looks legit oh well i better forward this on to the bookkeeper and get them to open it and mm. and it's of course malware so, could be any number of things ransomware or whatever else so then how would you easily spot that you wouldn't easily spot it it looks legit you have the trust you yeah. have the company name you really just That's have to really check your i guess your receivables your like. We have to, we're living in a world right now where we all, in business and in personal, we have to be a little bit untrusting mm -hmm. of what is coming to us. Right. In such a way that if I receive an invoice from somebody I know, and it looks legit, and mm -hmm. it looks like they're going to put me through to collections, hey, if I don't, if I'm not expecting an invoice from them, or I can't think of what it is, or maybe it makes me go, hmm, don't open it. If, if you need to look up your receivables or whatever or payables or pick up the phone or pop them an email and say, do I owe you any money right yeah, now? Yeah, what's happening? Because yeah. I don't remember. I got an email owing. here. It could be a phishing scam or some other thing, but it looks like it came from you. Is it legit? Or, mm -hmm. you know, could you just double check our account and just make sure we're up to date? Yeah, I guess first things first. Pay all of your bills on time. That way, no matter what... <laughs> It's going to look fishy. So you can if you just get reply to that email and say, whatever, I don't owe you nothing. I owe nothing to yeah. no one. <laughs> So watch out for that wow. one, folks. It's dangerous uh, because it can trick your customers and it can trick you. So be careful. Mm -hmm. And if you suspect that that kind of thing has been happening on your website or, you know, if you, if you want to even warn some of your customers, feel free to send them a copy of this video and spread the word, spread this video, and, uh, and let them know that this is a very serious threat. Yeah. Thank you. We've got to take a really quick break. When we come back, we are going to be looking at retro gaming, but uh, hey, there's been an upgrade. Not going to tell you too much, but we're going to get you a retro gaming system that fits with any decor. Stick around. For a limited time, get your hands on limited edition shirts from the Category 5 TV network. These high quality shirts are manufactured by Teespring, a fundraising website, and your purchase will help support the shows we produce. Get yours today and send us your pictures to be featured on the corresponding show. Visit cat5.tv slash shirts to support us and get your official network shirt today. cat5.tv slash shirts. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Sasha, do you remember uh, when we tried to pilot a new show called Try It, Buy It? That was a fun one episode oh, we did. It was so much fun. Depending on where you're located in this big old world of ours, you may remember it as either the Sega Mega Drive or the Sega Genesis. And now, more than a quarter of a century after its original release in Japan, it's more convenient than ever to take these classic Sega games with you. My review is coming right up, so stick around. Try it. Buy it. And I brought it with me. The, this is the At Games Sega Genesis Portable Unit. And it has, it's got, it's got the tons. works. It has tons oh, of games. Oh, man. Like, if you want to play Sonic the Hedgehog, it's, it's there. Can you all see that? Oh, classic, right? So this is the portable that you reviewed. I had to bring it out because tonight is a little bit of a retro gaming throwback. And bear with me. I'll be a little while. 
<laughs> One of the things that was wow. really cool about this, though, yes. this device is not only does it have a built-in screen, but it also has an adapter that you can plug into the jack, and now you can plug it into your standard old TV set. Right. Perfect. With the RCA, right? Right. But no HDMI output, so it doesn't work on a modern TV unless it has AVN, which a lot of them do. So we were still pretty good to play this up on the big screen. I think you plugged it into your 60-inch TV at I one did. point and tried it out. So did you know that the Raspberry Pi also supports this cable? So if you plug this into the headphone jack of the Raspberry Pi, it right. automatically detects it and senses it and says, oh, that's not headphones. That'd be an RCA cable. Let's switch over to AV mode. So now the, the Raspberry Pi works on a, uh, a standard old style CRT TV. Now that I bring to your attention because there is no more ultimate retro gaming experience than sticking it up on a 22-inch CRT TV. Right. You got to admit, that's right. retro, right? That is retro. What else would be super retro? Oh, I, I want to tell you all about it. I can't wait to show you the case that we're looking at tonight. But first of all, we took it to the next level on episode number 442 because we're so into retro gaming. And so we sat down and we built the first retro pie that we had ever built. It is lovely. And it works great. It and does. you're still using this. I'm still using this. You guys it. are still enjoying this, plugged in by HDMI yep. on a 60-inch uh, TV. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is a Raspberry Pi 3. Now, I lied a little bit. This wasn't the first RetroPie we built because we tried it on a Raspberry Pi 2 first. Right. Then you bought the Raspberry Pi 3 for the upgrade, and it has run fantastically well. But there was one thing that didn't run well. Do you remember what that was? Ah. I'm throwing you back. I'm putting you on the spot oh. here. There was a particular system that's built into the Retro Pie, and I it call was, it a Retro Pie. There were some games that didn't work. And the N64. Yes. The Nintendo 64 was like. Yes, it was choppy. It couldn't do a thing. Yeah, no. So, unplayable, basically. What a Retro Pie is, and you can go back to episode number 442 if you want a retro throwback. But what it is now, it's a distribution of Linux that goes onto the micro SD card on your Raspberry Pi mm -hmm. microcomputer. So it's like this small. And you can put any number of game ROMs on there. So many. It supports like Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega Genesis, mm -hmm. aka uh, Master System. Atari? Atari 2600, 7800, Lynx. Uh, it's, got, it's got everything. And then mm -hmm. it does have the N64. It's got uh, Sony PlayStation, the original, yeah. uh, which does play very well, surprisingly. Um, and, and all kinds of support. We're going to look at it in just a couple of minutes' time. One of the neat things about it, too, Sasha, if you want to hold up your controller, how do you control it? I control it with this. With a PS3 remote. Yep. Because the Raspberry Pi 3 has built-in Bluetooth. Right. So we're able to use that and sync it to the uh, the Raspberry Pi, and it becomes a controller for the Retro Pi, is, is what it's called, because that's the distribution of, uh, of Raspbian that, that we put on it. And it's got emulators out the wazoo and everything else. I use an Xbox uh, controller. I don't know if it's... Is this an Xbox One or Xbox 360 controller? I don't know. I picked it up at a used game shop. And it is not Bluetooth, so I had to pick up this little guy here off of Amazon. It was like 14 bucks, 9 bucks, something like that. And it's just USB to a receiver for the uh, Microsoft controllers. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. So retro gaming... Is it, it's funny that retro gaming has come so far in the past <laughs> couple of years because now RetroPie, the distro, has brought out version 4.4. So what's new with 4.4? Oh, boy. Well, let's say what's new with the Raspberry Pi. Let's just say the B+. How's that? So the, the, the new Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+, came out and it's 1.4 gigahertz processor it's got it's more powerful it's faster mm -hmm. it runs cooler and um, theoretically it should be able to run our emulators better than the original raspberry pi 3 which right. clocks out is caps out at 1.2 gigahertz and when it gets warm it clocks down to 900 megahertz like 0 0.9 gigahertz. Uh -huh. So this one's a lot faster, the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. So the 4.4 release of RetroPie introduces support for uh, the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. Okay. 
That's what we're excited about. Now, it also brought in, um, now, not the image. The image file can only be uh, burnt to a Raspberry Pi card. So you can only okay. boot it from a Raspberry Pi. Right. However, they've also put a lot of effort into creating scripts to allow you to install RetroPie on other platforms. So you know the Odroid XU4Q that I right. have is a super powerful 8-core SPC. It's available right. on that. It's available on the C1, C2, XU2, uh, XU3, oh. XU4. I don't know. It's like all the Odroids. But then yeah. the new version brings out the Asus Tinkerboard support as well. So if you're a Tinkerboard tinkerer, then uh, there away. is rudimentary support for that now as well through the scripting uh, of that. Um, so performance uh, is meant to be a lot better on the mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi 3B Plus now because right. it's got a better processor. We're going to put that to the test tonight when we launch our Nintendo 64 stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shall we look at how we obtain RetroPie? We shall. First of all, back it up a little bit. How to get a, a pie, a Raspberry Pi. Go to cat5.tv slash pie. I, as I move this stuff around, I so badly want to show you what our retro pie looks like. There it Let's is. just move that aside. We're going to take a look at that in just a couple of minutes' time. Okay, so I'm going to bring up retro pie. Now, when we talk about Raspberry Pi, we're, we're used to P.I., Right. But, but it's actually pie. Like, they look. took it one step further and said, no, no, this is the edible. This and is. so let's, let's bring it up on my screen. Retro pie, this is a weird one, dot org dot UK. Not dot co dot UK, dot org dot UK. That's going to bring you here. Tells you all about retro pie. And again, so you buy the Raspberry Pi unit and put it together in whatever case you want. Make it, you know, however you want. Tonight, we're, we're taking it to the next level of retroness with a very retro case. Uh, but you don't have to do that. You can just use the stock case that comes with the kit uh, if you like. Um, but here, retro pie is the distribution that we're going to use. So you don't. On a Raspberry Pi, you don't have to install Raspbian or Noobs and then install RetroPie. That's a real roundabout way to do it and right. can be quite onerous. So what you can do instead is just download the complete image. It's ready to go. It's ready to deploy. You just boot it up and it's done. So that's what I'm going to show you tonight real briefly. So you can see RetroPie version 4.4 was released April 14th, 2018 with all of the bonuses that we mentioned. And we've got support for the 0 and the 1, which, you know, I don't know how the gaming would be on there. Maybe NES Classic would be fantastic, but certainly the, uh, the Atari stuff. And then there's the supported... Uh, the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3, which includes the B+. So when you click on that, it's going to download you an image.gz file. So if you're on Microsoft Windows, you're going to need a program called 7-Zip in order to, uh, to extract that file because you need the image file. If you're on Linux or Mac OS, you're going to be able to extract that just by right-clicking on it and go Extract Perfect. Here something like that. So once you've downloaded that, now here's where some folks actually you know, find this a little bit almost confusing because, you know, what, how do I install this now? I've, I've got my SD card and I've copied that image file onto it and I don't understand why it won't boot. And that's because we, ha you remember how we used to have to boot, uh, burn CDs? Yes. And when you burned a CD, then you could boot it. Um, but you had to burn it using special software that would create the bootloaders and everything else. So same thing goes for your SD card. It's actually a, a very similar process. But we're going to use a program that is freely available. And all this stuff is free other than the hardware. Uh, but we're going to go to etcher.io. And when we go there... This is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and you're going to download this program and just follow the prompts. Nice and simple. Huh. Um, there it is for Windows, Mac, and Linux. This is a great tool for burning your stuff, um, and I say burning. We still use that term, even though, and There's, that comes from the laser that's etching into a, a right. CD, right? There's no real burning. You're not actually burning, you're, but the term still exists, um, and, and it still applies. So, so what you do is you, you then browse to the image that you downloaded. This is a screenshot here. Mm -hmm. So with select image, you browse to the image. Then you plug in your SD card for your Raspberry Pi, and it will automatically select it. And then you hit flash. And just make sure that that second step, that you have indeed selected the correct card, it's probably best. I always recommend unplug all your like USB flash drives and everything else before you do this, because you wouldn't want to accidentally overwrite the wrong Thing. Exactly. That way, there's no messing around. You know exactly what it is. Yeah, exactly. I would 
do the wrong thing first. So. Not now. You've Not seen now. This. Now I would do the right thing. And I want to show you everything else <laughs> that we've got to show you here. So that shows you a little bit about how to get this. That's retro pie. Get 4.4 or higher. When we come back, I'm going to show you what I think is probably the ultimate retro geek case for the retro pie system. Because we got to totally retro it out. Right. Geek it out. The suspense. Oh, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, you'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit Category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners, and thank you for watching. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Tonight is Retro Gaming Night, and uh, that's because RetroPie 4.4 has been released with support for the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. Tonight we're going to put the test. We're going to fire it up live on the show, and the rest of the show is just going to be us playing Super Mario Bros. Pretty you know much that's saying, it. Yep. Uh, so, first of all, if you want to get yourself a really cool retro case for your retro pie, head on over to cat5.tv slash pie. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. First of all, <laughs> with my brand new Raspberry Pi 3B+, the first thing I want to do is I want to put some heat sinks on it. Now, these are available on Amazon. You can grab heat sinks. They probably, now in my case, they came with the, uh, the kit that I bought from Canna Kit. So, cat5.tv slash pi, you buy the kit, it comes with heat sinks. So, I need to put on the CPU heat sink just to keep that nice and cool. That's going to dissipate the, the heat even better than the, uh, the improved uh, cooling uh, kind of metal cover that's on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And then there's one for um, this little chip over here. I don't know if that's the, the math coprocessor. To the, I'm not sure what that is. But it's cute. And this will keep it cool because it does get hot. Real simple. There's stickers. You don't need any frosting or anything like that. <laughs> no expertise. <laughs> yeah, just push down on it a little bit, give it a little bit of pressure. And now we are ready to install it in our new retro case. <laughs> and this, ladies and gentlemen, is just the box. <laughs> they went all out and I, I would pay somebody, I would ask them, how can I send you money just to buy that box? And inside the box is, is really what it's all about, folks. And we talk about mini game systems, like the mini, like the SNES mini. And look at this, a Nintendo Entertainment System miniaturized. It's got USB and Ethernet there. It's got HDMI port on the back, the SD card. And there, incidentally, on the bottom here, where there normally was the GPIO or the connection, is a little storage case. They even got that detail to put your SD cards in. It's got two USB ports on the front and a working power button that operates just like the uh, original NES. Like it holds in. It's not like just a uh, 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 momentary switch. It stays in. It came with a fan as well, uh, a screwdriver, some screws, and just a quick little instruction set. We'll look at that if we need to. Okay, so we're going to actually put this together for you tonight. Um, so let's, uh, let's get started. Cool. I guess the fan is just going to offset or draw some of the heat out of there. And there's some screws to mount that to the case. So what I like about this, if you notice the USB ports on the front and everything, and the, it actually has circuitry. Like it's not your typical Raspberry Pi case that you just stick the Pi in and then plug everything into the Pi. It has these um, connectors that plug into the Pi, and then it has its own headers um, that make it so that you're not restricted to the form factor of the Pi itself. So with my Raspberry Pi 3B+, 
I'm just going to uh, insert that with the uh, HDMI at the back, but uh, first we'll connect in Ethernet, and that will make live the Ethernet port on the front of the what's called a NestPy case plus. So this is the next generation of the Nest Pi case. Uh, and this one is slightly larger than the original with um, better cooling and a little bit more airflow and, and certainly less cramped. And I think it looks more legitimately like a real Nintendo Entertainment System than the original case. So it just kind of goes in there, just line up the headers at the back because it is going to, you're going to plug your HDMI directly into the Pi. And then we've just got a little pack of screws. Um, most of those, six of those are for the case itself because this is a, a case that we're going to assemble and, and leave assembled. It's not something you're going to be swapping your board in and out of. Um, but then there are two screws to actually mount the Raspberry Pi board to this case. Now, keep in mind, this is compatible with uh, B model boards. So you're looking at the Raspberry Pi 2, Raspberry Pi 3, Raspberry Pi 3 model B+. Plus. Um, so you can, you can mount other system boards in here as well, and presumably uh, future ready as, as well, as long as the form factor on the new Raspberry Pis stay the same. So with these two screws, it's just going to mount that in. See, and I have to make interesting, Sasha, uh, putting in two screws. So, you know. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Ah, oh, thanks. Tiny, tiny screws. Yeah. Look at how tiny they are. They're tinier than a pie. They're, everything on the pie is so cute. Oh, and this so is small. just the cutest. I know. It's nice and snug. It feels real snug. There you go. Now, this header here is uh, going to give you the fan. Uh, so we just plug that in. Make sure you put it in the right way. The, uh, the pins are on the outside of the Raspberry Pi, and that enables the header on the top there and gives it power for the fan uh, as well as um, whatever other power is needed. Now there's no designator here which way the fan is blowing. Uh, I know from experience that usually the uh, the sticker side is where it's going to be blowing out of so I'm going to put that down so that we're drawing the heat out of the case. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be drawing air into it. We want to push the air out of it and it just snaps in there and then there are three screws that uh, that just hold the fan in place so it's not going to fall out There's some good TV right here folks <laughs> riveting look at that look at the way I turned the screw and, and note the screwdriver was even included so I didn't even have to buy, buy or find a tiny enough screwdriver it's included so now you've got an extra screwdriver for that's actually very considerate yeah you know until you end up with with 300 of these screwdrivers you're you're happy that they included it yeah now you can also fix glasses i feel like that's yeah. the same size oh i'm thinking that this is going to be a perfect size for changing motors in my drone oh that's perfect mm -hmm. nice simple installation folks uh, i think if you give yourself 10 minutes time now we're not going to take that much time tonight because i i have the power to accelerate the video a little bit um, but 10 minutes time is all you need and then you're going to be up and running with your retro pie so i'm not sure which way to uh to put this cable onto the uh this is the fan header I'm not sure which way it goes and there's no like one way you huh. could put it on either way i don't see anything in the instructions about the fan either it's only about the case and the installation of the pie so uh, I could plug it in with the positive on the left. And you can always change the polarity, and that's going to change the direction of the fan. Um, but actually, the, the red, I'm just looking, and there is a, uh, a marking that says the positive is on the right, my right. So that should be the correct way to, to put that fan in there. Okay, so now the next step is just to close it up, and I'm just I'm making sure that the cable there is not going to... There's quite a bit of slack on that cable. I don't want it to obstruct the fan. I don't want it to get into the fan. I guess I could put a twist tie on that or something like that, but um, I think it looks like it's going to stay out of the way. It's not going to nudge its way over to the fan, so shouldn't be a problem. And that should just snap right together. There we go. Doesn't that look awesome? It looks... Oh. Awesome. My goodness. I can't wait to show this to my family because we grew up with that. Look at the SD card slot on the side, too. 
All right, so now we've got those six screws we've got to put in. This is where, you know, this is, this is way too much <laughs> for you. So I'm going to th- speed this up a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first retro gaming system, Sasha, growing up? I remember? played, well, I played Atari games, and then I had, uh, I think I skipped right to Super Nintendo. Really? To be honest. So you went from Atari 2600 to a Super Nintendo? Yeah. I had an Atari 2600, and then when the NES came out, so the Atari 2600 was, like, out when I was born. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I got the Nintendo Entertainment System when it came out. So there it is, folks. So this really is a throwback for me. I'm so proud and excited about this. Just this case that's going to sit under our TV in full sight. It's got HDMI on the back. You'll notice that the header for the power has been offset using their built-in header. And it looks astonishing. It is sharp. It is so cool. The ultimate retro pie. Retro pie case. And there it is. Are we ready to fire this up? Yes, we are. All right. It feels good. Uh, you know, people are going to ask, like, is it flimsy and cheap? And no, it feels, like, substantial. It yeah. feels real. It's solid. You know? it's... It is solid. And you feel that button? Yeah. It's click, 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 click. Yeah. The reset oh, button is, is uh, momentary, so it's yeah. just like the original. Everything and, about it is... And I guess, uh, you know, folks are wondering about the uh, SD card slot over here. So there it is. I've already put in our RetroPie SD slot uh, card, and it just it goes in and out nice and easy. But it's not going to fall out. There you go. There we go. Okay, so let's fire it up, Sash. All right, here we go. Now, I can plug in power because, remember, it has a power port, uh, power button on the front. It's not going to turn on until I hit that button. I'm going to go HDMI output, so it supports HDMI, but it does have access to the, um, the AV port as well. Okay. So if you want, you can use one of these cables, right, and plug that in here. And then you've got RCA output for an old-style TV. Right. Or if you're real retro. If you want to go completely retro. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, and then I mentioned a little bit earlier that I'm using an Xbox controller, so I do need to use an Xbox receiver because it's not Bluetooth. If we wanted to, we could use Sony PlayStation 3 remotes, which are Bluetooth, and right. then I would not need a receiver, and I could play it just like that. So no, no extra wires coming out of the front. I think that would be cool. So I'm going to get myself some PlayStation controllers. But it does have two USB ports on the front, too, and then another two under here. So, But you see the ones there? Yeah. You can plug those. Uh, you can get USB retro NES controllers that look exactly like the originals, but they're USB, and you can plug those no in as well. No way. That is That's the next awesome. step. That's if you're completely obsessed with retro. Okay, so I'm going to plug in my receiver here, and I'm just going to push the power button. There it goes. And just so you know, she's a bootin'. Ah. And I can feel that there is wind coming out of the top of the so, retro pie. So you went in the right direction. So I did go in the right direction and the correct polarity. There it is. And ladies and gentlemen, retro pie is booting on our Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus in an NES Pi Case Plus case. Ah. I'm just going to leave this running all the time connected to my TV. What? It just reminds me so much. I just saw Ready Player One, the movie. Yes. And in the movie, I don't know if you've seen the movie yet. No, I have I, not yet. I, I feel like you should. Okay. But in it, the creator of the Oasis, which is the virtual reality alternate universe that everybody lives in and plays in, but the creator of it was very obsessed with retro games. Oh, yeah? So all of the little Easter eggs and everything in the it's actual, all it's all nice. retro. So Sweet. there you go. You, you ready if, to jump in? If, yes. Ready Player One? Yeah. Okay, so no game pads detected. So on my Xbox controller, I just hold in the power button just like I was connecting to an Xbox, and it will. And then I press A, and there I am. I'm in. So welcome to version 4.4 of RetroPie. Oh. So we've got Atari 2600, Atari 20, uh, 7800, Lynx, Mega Drive, which is the play. Uh, the um, oh, now I'm. <laughs> Why do they name them differently? What do we call it? The Genesis. Genesis. Genesis yeah. here in the Western world. That's the one that we uh, we had a Genesis growing up as well. Nintendo 64. Nintendo Entertainment System. I feel honor bound being that we are running in an NES kit. 
mm-hmm. to click on I the support, NES. I support this decision. Do you now? I do. Um, I played NES with my grandma. <gasps> and you'll notice, see how it says unknown at the right? That's because this is a fresh install, um, and I have not synced all the artwork yet. Now, it will go out onto the internet and get all the graphics, the covers, the reviews, the description of every game, Mm -hmm. but we have not yet done that. You can do that. Um, Should we, like, skip down to, like, Super Mario Bros.? I believe so, yes. All right. Oh, and the chat room seems to agree. Super Mario says Soul Boo. Yeah, okay. I'll get there. I'll get there. Amazing. Uh, Okay. Oh, what did I do? Uh, Oh, I, I clicked right. Sorry, I jumped into PlayStation. Nintendo Entertainment System. Super. Super Mario Bros. Okay. Now, you'll notice it says two twice, because I think I I selected the wrong artwork. (laughs) Oh. One of these is Super Mario Bros. 1, and one of them is Super Mario Bros. 2. Do you think the first one is right? Let's try it. Yeah. Okay. Don't press anything here, folks. Oh, I got it. I got it. Okay. And it's widescreen. It is so cool. Oh, my goodness. Now, I don't think I have... I don't think I have audio piping out from the RetroPie right now. But there you have it. You see my phone ring. The, the oh, yeah? Mario Brothers. Yeah. So, I am literally, right now, playing Super Mario Bros. <laughs> On an Xbox controller, on a uh, mini NES over don't here. Don't die, don't die. Ah. Okay. <gasps> oh. oh. Ding, 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 ding. Now, if I press start and select at the same time, that gets me back to the main menu. Right. Okay. So now I can go, I can go back with B, and now I can scroll over to other systems and see what I want to do. So... We had talked about the Nintendo 64 being poor performance on RetroPie in the past. Right, yeah, like mine. Mario Kart was like... Not worth it. Couldn't do it. And I think Mario Kart is probably a really good test. I agree. everybody wants to play Mario Kart every day. All the time. So let's, let's go there. Let's find it. Now, just for the record... Um, RetroPie is an operating system for your retro gaming system, Raspberry Pi. It does not come with any games, okay? okay. So the games, you, you have to find them. You might find Abandonware, which is, you know, s- software that's so old that presumably it's... Free. Yeah, they don't sell it anymore. Yeah. Companies, companies are starting to do this where they're bringing back out retro games so that they can rebirth the copyrights on those games. Oh. And so it's a little bit... Ah, but do it, so do it now. <laughs> do it now. So just keep that in mind. So you are not going to see all these games on there out of the box. It's going to be empty. Um, you'll need to get those yourself. Where am I headed? Uh, Mario Kart. Mar- yes. L-M-N-O-P. Oh, I need to go up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going the wrong way here. I skipped over it while I was talking. Okay, Mario, 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 there Mario. Okay, Mario. Mario Golf. Mario Kart 64. Okay, so this is literally a moment of truth. We've tried running this before, and it was so stuttery that you could not play it. Right. Okay. Let's see how smooth you are. Let's see how smooth we are. Again, we don't push anything during this because that's going to customize your controls, which I don't want to do. I want to leave everything as defaults. I've done that. Have you accidentally uh, uh-huh. and then got stuck and had to restart? Or and something? I don't even understand. Yeah. Okay, that screen did not fly like that on uh, the. It looks version. so good. Oh, and like I'm pushing the start button on my controller. I wish I had a second game controller here for you, mm-hmm. Sasha. But what I'll do is I'll I'll start the game and let you drive. I feel like that's ba- a bad idea. Have you seen me drive? This is this doesn't end well ever. Okay, you start. <laughs> okay, I'll start. And then I'll. I'm speak. gonna go 150 cc. Okay. okay. Here we go. Uh, Luigi. Uh, do we want mushroom cup, flower cup, star cup, or special cup? Special cup. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, because and I think I could have I could have actually chosen a track underneath. It's hmm. been a long time, Sasha. Okay, let's see. The performance so far is out of this world. Like, I'm hard-pressed to think I'm not playing on a Nintendo 64. Let's see how it performs in-game. Oh. Oh, it's... Not leggy no at all. No way. Oh, okay. You, you drive so like Robbie sucks, but <sighs> I'd say this actually plays as well as my Switch. <laughs> oh, I oh, have this on Switch. Oh, do you? Yeah. And this plays as well as your I think so. Four hundred dollar Switch. It just rumbled. Ah. Uh, my pack just rumbled. <gasps> it has haptic feedback. No way. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got a little excited there. <laughs> I did not realize it even had that. How do I get out of here? Oh no, I'm stuck forever. I got excited and I crashed into a wall. Uh oh. Come on, Robbie. You're in eighth place, Luigi, Robbie. Come on, man. How do I back up? Is there a reverse? Oh, oh a you can reverse out. the camera. Yeah. Oh, come on. No, it can't go down like that. Well, we can edit it's this rumbling. part out. My, it's rumbling. Yeah, we'll just. <laughs> We'll speed it up for you. Yeah, the performance is great. Look at me just smashing into that wall. Yeah. I'm serious. How do I back up, Sasha? Oh, thank you. Did you? Okay. I pressed uh, Y. Okay. Uh, on, I'm on a, remember, I'm on an Xbox controller, and I'm terrible. But look at that performance, folks. I love this. That is exquisite. I'm going to jump to uh, a larger screen for you folks at home. For Here, that. Sasha. I'm going to give that to you. I don't know that that's so, the best choice. Okay. Okay. I found B one? B is to like make it go. Okay. And, and controller is your left analog oh, stick. Okay. Okay. Remember, everyone, I ride a bike. I don't drive a car. <laughs> a 150cc little Mario Kart. Okay. So far, I haven't seen any lag. Chat room, what do you think so far? Oh. Yeah, we got paper boy. Come on, all the classics. Oh, I'm in the wrong. I have to You're going go the red. wrong way, Sasha. Okay, okay. It's because, okay. I still am going the wrong way? I thought I did reverse. <laughs> What's happening? Okay. I know we have to go to the newsroom soon, but oh. I would rather just play this. You game. know, this could be the show, folks. <gasps> there we go. Oh. See, it's not all me. Spot. I'm not. I'm not. It's it's difficult. It's challenging because we haven't played in so long. Folks, head on over to cat5.tv slash pi. Get your gear and then hook yourself up with RetroPie 4.4. And the, I am flabbergasted. I, I Anytime we do a feature like this on the show, it's like, how is it going to perform? Is, it gonna, is this going to be impressive or is it going to be disappointing or is it going to crash? What's the opposite of a flop? This is the opposite. This is like... The ultimate awesomeness. This is amazing. Like, this is uh, going to be the best gift you buy whomever you love. Sasha, my kids are going <laughs> to adore this. See? And this, sitting on, on under the TV, like when mm -hmm. I have family over and we all grew up with the Nintendo Entertainment System, that's amazing. And it's not overly expensive either. I mean, so cost, you know, Raspberry Pi kit, all the... All the peripherals, SD card, power, cable, um, the board itself, the heat sinks. You're looking about $100 Canadian, $70, $79 US kind of idea. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's like 25 bucks Canadian. So that's like $4 US. You know, yeah, it, I think it works 25 out. Cents. Yeah, you know, so <laughs> it's, it's not a huge investment. But as you can see, we can load it up chock full of games. And it is still a Raspberry Pi. So keep that in mind because you can install other things on it. You can right. use it as a full computer. If you just want the retro look and you want to use a wireless keyboard and mouse and turn it into your home theater PC or, or use it as a computer, you can do that. That would just throw everybody off. That would be weird. absolutely would be awesome. <laughs> that is the Retro Pi gaming system, version 4.4 from cat5.tv slash pi. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Sasha, uh, I know you've got some, uh, some great news and uh, some stuff to cover. You want to you take controls tonight? Oh, I, it's better when you do it. Is it better it when is, I do it? It is. 
But let's see. All yeah, right. you do it. You want okay. me to do it? Yeah, I do. All right, sorry. We didn't we didn't mean to fight right here on the air. <laughs> that was a very Canadian fight. You do it. No, you do it. No, uh, no, please. Please, please. You, you do it you. better. Thank you, yeah. Sasha. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. The future of electric cars could look a lot like slot car tracks. Amazon claims it doesn't eavesdrop on customers' conversations to target advertising at them after it emerged that it had patented voice-sniffing tech. A U.S. federal judge ruled on Monday that Facebook must face a class action lawsuit alleging that the social network unlawfully used a facial recognition process on photos without users' permission. And veteran game maker Sega announces getting back into the hardware game at the Sega FES 2018 event over the weekend with a shrunken version of its classic Mega Drive or Genesis console. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston, yeah, man. you're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? Just because Jeff is confused doesn't mean you have to be. Visit cat5.tv slash dreamhost to sign up for unlimited web hosting for your website with unlimited email accounts, MySQL databases, the latest version of PHP, WordPress, and more, and even a free domain name registration. It's less than $6 per month, so sign up today. cat5.tv slash dreamhost. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. The world's first electric road that recharges the batteries of cars and trucks driving on it has been opened in Sweden. About 2 kilometers or 2.1 miles of electric rail has been embedded in a public road near Stockholm, but the government's road agency has already drafted a national map for future expansion. Sweden's target of achieving independence from fossil fuels by 2030 requires a 70% reduction in the transport sector. The technology behind the electrification of the road linking Stockholm Orlando Airport to a logistics site outside the capital city aims to solve the thorny problems of keeping electric vehicles charged and the manufacturing of their batteries affordable. Energy is transferred from two tracks of rail in the road via a movable arm attached to the bottom of a vehicle. The design is not dissimilar to that of a slot car track. The electrified road is divided into 50 meter sections within an individual section powered only only when a vehicle is above it. When a vehicle stops, the current is disconnected. The system is able to calculate the vehicle's energy consumption, which enables electricity costs to be debited per vehicle and user. There is no electricity on the surface. There are just two tracks, just like the outlet in a wall. Five or six centimeters down is where the electricity is, but if the road is flooded with salt water, they found that the electricity level at the surface is only one volt, so you could walk on it barefoot. The dynamic charging, as opposed to the use of roadside charging posts, means that the vehicle's batteries can be smaller, along with their manufacturing costs. National grids are increasingly moving away from coal and oil, and battery storage is seen as crucial to changing the source of energy used for transportation. How interesting is that? Amazing. Cool. Amazing in a place that doesn't have snow, though. Don't they? No, like, they do. Do they? Do they oh, have yeah. snow? So that it's like totally, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't even know. Does Sweden, Sweden get snow? Gets snow. I guess they do. I see. Yeah, I feel like. they do. Come on. Most people think of winter when they hear of Sweden. Oh. <laughs> Except for me. <laughs> oh, Wikipedia. That's the first. Th no, that's Sweden.se, nature. Because of the warm Gulf Stream, the climate here can be much milder than you might expect. Spring, summer, fall, and winter each have their own unique personalities. However, in the winter months, snow is rare near the southern coast. Okay, so they do have some snow. Ah, uh, yes. That's good. Okay, because that would be my one thing. You know what's neat about it, though? is what? Because of the way this thing attaches to the track, mm -hmm. or not attaches, I guess touches the track to get its power, um, it works like a snowplow on the track itself. So if it did oh. have snow or ice built up, it, would. it, it is self-maintaining, essentially. It cleans itself. 
I wonder, because I love this idea and I would love to see it implemented like internationally, mm -hmm. but how do they power the actual road? Right? Is it solar that they're using, or are they using? Oh boy. Are they using <clears throat> fossil fuels to actually create the electricity? Well, and I think this is where Sweden <laughs> is is kind of um, separating themselves from the rest of the world, if you will. In that um, they, so it's powered by the grid. Right. So the electrical system, the the electrical power that's available to the communities that that it's a part of, but their grid is predominantly produce uh, like producing energy through renewable resources so Perfect. where where you know you may think about you know with coal and and um fossil fuels being used to generate electricity well they've got a lot of well for one thing nuclear plants uh, a few of them but that generates a lot of power and right. cleanly um and also uh, hydroelectric so water power as well Perfect. so uh, so it comes out of the grid so there it works because it is clean energy coming out of the grid because the grid is clean. Where here, I would think that if they wanted to install something like that, they, the company installing it would also have to create their own power sources if they wanted to be green. Right. A long time ago, I saw a video about solar roadways. Right. And I... do. You, did you see the same the, one? Those it was are the very tiles? Well. The tiles, I haven't right? seen the video, but I read the story and I remember okay. you mentioning it in the newsroom. Right, because I loved it so much. It was very well produced. <laughs> video <laughs> it pitched an idea that's implanted in my brain if they had a solar roadway even solar sidewalks or something then it would it would not only power that but then also it could keep a temperature to the point where right. you wouldn't need plows right in canada yeah that could be amazing yeah anyway. but they didn't have that solar roadway didn't have a way of charging cars it did not this was before these cars were invented right yeah so it'll be interesting. It's very, very... Well, I mean, from my perspective, it seems expensive to implement. Um, right. It, it's costing them about a million euros per kilometer to lay this track. But it's saving the earth, and there is, it is it no... It is good in that regard, but... It, and I guess it's a little bit of an experiment at this point. Like, will this mm -hmm. work? Will it be adopted by car manufacturers? Can cars right. be manipulated? And in fact, one of the, the vehicles that they're using in the test um, process is an old diesel truck that okay. they've converted to be able to use this type of energy. Right. So, so that's pretty neat. Well, to be honest, they're doing this roadway close to an airport right now, and it actually does make sense to me that they would do roads like this close to places where a car could be sitting for a long time and perhaps lose okay. charge, right? This is going to well, charge you as you There's a lot of highways move, in Sweden right? too, right? So a lot of people are on the go for long right. periods of time. And if that's the case, then wouldn't it be good to have it on those straight stretches where the autonomous vehicle can line you up, lock you in, charge your vehicle, and then move aside for the next guy? Mm -hmm. That, to me, makes a lot of sense. When you're sitting, though, like if you're parked at an airport, you can plug in. Right. So Maybe you could, park, different scenario. you could park on like chi sensors. You know how you can. Chi well, you know how you you um you charge your phone, isn't it with chi when you put your phone down? Oh yes. Right? Can you imagine? <laughs> I was picturing chi like like you know the the but, old sense of the term. Now right. this qi spelling. Yes. Yeah. So if you like parked your car and all all of a sudden it just connected and you were just parked huh. on a charging spot. I that wonder how I wonder how much energy would be wasted by uh, that type of a technology because that would be really neat. It would be. That would be really cool. <laughs> huh. Full of ideas here. That's right. Full of ideas. Before, Love it. Before I mute my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Still getting used to the switching. <laughs> oh. Amazon claims it does not eavesdrop on customers' conversations to target advertising at them after it emerged that it had patented voice-sniffing tech. The patent describes listening to conversations and building a profile of customers' likes and dislikes. Reports speculated that Amazon would deploy the technology in its voice-activated Echo speakers, but Amazon said it did not listen to customers' conversations to target advertising at them. Launched in 2014, Amazon's Echo speakers can play music, set a timer, or read the news when addressed with the wake word Alexa. However, the patent describes an algorithm that can listen to entire conversations using trigger words such as like or love to build a profile of customers the document states that the system could then offer targeted advertising and product recommendations 
But Amazon said it did not use customers' voice recordings for targeted ad advertising. In a statement, it said, We take privacy seriously and have built multiple layers of privacy into our Echo devices. Like many companies, we file a number of forward-looking patent applications that explore the full possibilities of new technology. Patents take multiple years to receive and do not necessarily reflect current developments to products and services. Hmm. Okay. So you buy a speaker. You An Alexa device. You put it into your house. You plug it in. You turn it on. And then you don't want it to listen to you? We, we live in an interesting world, don't we, where people sign up for <laughs> Facebook and then complain that Facebook is selling their information or otherwise compromising privacy. And, you know, you buy an Alexa device and, and then get concerned that it's listening to you, but it's, it's kind of inevitable. And I know that they're it saying it's It has one not. job. It's one job is to listen yeah. to you. It's Amazon. Okay, so... Remember Am what they are. They sell you things. I actually love this. I actually hope that they... I'm sorry. I hope that they're spying on the things that people like and don't like because I want better recommendations for things I like. Oh, yeah? Right now, what happens is I search for something, I like it, I buy it, and then I get ads forever about it. Ha! I've already bought it. I have it. No. Tell me the next thing. You know what's worse is I get a lot of emails for things that I put away that I said, no, I'm not going to buy that because I cross compare many different products before choosing the one I want. Right. So when I bought this particular Raspberry Pi case that looks like a Nintendo Entertainment System, you know that I also clicked on every other Raspberry Pi case. So now I'm getting all these recommendations for Raspberry Pi cases, but I already bought the one I chose. Right. Or I, I'm getting recommendations because I am an Amazon partner, category five is, and so right. I, I don't, we don't get any reports that show us who bought what and where it's going and who's, it's not personally identifiable to us at all. But I am interested to see what people buy. Right. So sometimes I'll see something that I'm like, what on earth is that that made us $5? So I'll click on it. A vibe. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so one of our viewers purchased this odd thing. And so now I'm getting all these emails from Amazon recommending these odd things and related odd things. See, if they're doing, if they're making these algorithms and things where all of a sudden they can tell what I like and don't like, mm -hmm. and they're making it sharper and more specific to actually who I am as a person. Considering we all just shop on Amazon through Category 5's partner Which links. what I do. Um, I, yeah. I, I just, I can't see it being a bad thing that if you've bought this Alexa device, if you bought an Echo or whatever it's mm -hmm. called, I, ha I don't have one clearly or else I would know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> How could you complain that it could possibly be listening to you when you bought it to yeah. listen to you? I think people you? still have this underlying fear of the loss of privacy and right. big brother then, of companies keeping track of our personal information. Then don't do it. Don't buy it. Right? I like, think progressively are, we're going to be in a world where that's not an option. Right. Where we are being monitored all the time. I unplug our... We have a, a camera we use to call Dave's dad because we oh, yes. do video calls mm -hmm. with him. We unplug it when we're done with it. Okay. Which yeah, makes smart. sense to People me. put tape over the webcam on their, on their laptops. Right. Just so, in case. Just in case. Right. So if you plug in a speaker that's job is to listen to you and then you keep it plugged in, it's going to listen yeah, to it's you. It's, it's going to. It's going to listen to the news, and it's going to buy six dozen shortbread cookies in a dollhouse. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> as one final thought from me, um, I would think that what would be really, really interesting, maybe this is something that we could do as a show, but certainly I could see um, uh, somebody doing this, is to set up a controlled environment where we buy an Alexa device, mm -hmm. we set it up on an account that has never been set up before, and we put it in a control room where oh, okay. the only things that are ever spoken about in that room are controlled conversations. Like, I love ice cream. I love ice cream. Oh, I love dollhouses. I would love to eat ice cream that I've made. I would love an ice cream maker. Yeah, so these kinds of things. And 
<clears throat> for those of you who subscribe to Alexa and Google Home, I apologize that we just ordered you an ice cream maker. However, I think in that controlled environment, it would be interesting to see what kind of recommendations our account starts getting right. and prove once and for all whether or not this is happening right because i would they're denying it i would like to make a just a plea to you because i know that you're denying it but you're probably doing it can you just make it better so that you're not selling me things i already own guess what i have it i looked for it i made a decision <laughs> now sell me something that works with it Sell me something more. Sell exactly. me the batteries. Contact me in six months and sell me Say, the batteries. Hey, you just bought this. Guess what you're going to need? This. Yes, exactly. <laughs> hey, you need toothpaste. Exactly. <laughs> See? <laughs> All right. A U.S. federal judge ruled on Monday that Facebook must face a class action lawsuit alleging that the social network unlawfully used a facial recognition process on photos without user permission. The ruling adds to the privacy woes that have been mounting against Facebook for weeks since it was disclosed that the personal information of millions of users was harvested by the political consultancy Cambridge Analytica. U.S. District Judge James Donato ruled in San Francisco in a San Francisco federal court that a class action was the most efficient way to resolve the dispute over facial templates. Facebook said that it was reviewing the ruling, stating, we continue to believe the case has no merit and will defend ourselves vigorously. The, the class will consist of Facebook users in El Illinois for whom Facebook created and stored facial recognition algorithms after June 7, 2011. That is the date when Facebook launched uh, tag suggestions, a feature that suggests people to tag after a Facebook user uploads a photo. You know, and I like that feature. I think that's very, very handy. Yeah, again, again, this is a case where I get it. Sure. It's a feature and it's helpful. Yeah. But it could be used for malicious purposes for sure. And they write an algorithm per person. So if you look at your, your downloaded content from Facebook... Um, once you've downloaded your entire account, you can see that they have a facial recognition algorithm for you. Right. And it doesn't work in the case of my sisters, Beth and Colleen, because they're identical twins. It's fun because it tries to tag. Oh, yes? Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. It, it, okay. No, it, it doesn't, <clears throat> you want to hear one can't. that's weird, though? What? On our set here at Category 5 TV, we used to have a shelf behind us. And on that shelf mm -hmm. was a Spock bobblehead. Right, I okay. remember the guy. I uploaded a picture of us on the Category 5 TV set, not to Facebook, but to Twitter. Uh huh. And I don't know whether Twitter still does this, but they were obviously experimenting at one point because immediately it suggested that I tag Leonard Nimoy. This is a bobblehead. A bobblehead. Oh, that, a bobblehead. Yeah, that's good work. And it made that recommenda recommendation. I'm like, yeah, that's astonishing. Remember last week? We had a news story and we had a comment about how one of the one of our viewers was locked out of their Facebook because they didn't provide a picture of their face. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. This I, is I a recall. right, this is the way Facebook can tell you're you, right? They do this and yeah. they create a facial algorithm of who you are and then And come to think of it, um, Robert Koenig was on the show last week as well talking about cryptocurrency and he even brought to our attention that uh, Coinbase uses the same kind of technology, automated identification right. to take a photo and identify us. Yeah. Furthermore, I have to say in defense of Facebook, which is funny because I don't know, I no longer have Facebook, but I will defend it. Um, I'm pretty sure that users probably agreed to it in their terms and services. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's not Somewhere on page 472. Did you read it? Do you really know? This class action lawsuit is going to get thrown out. Mm. <laughs> Veteran game maker Sega announced it is back getting back into the hardware game at the Sega FES 2018 event over the weekend with a shrunken version of its classic Mega Drive or Genesis console. In an announcement in no way connected to the success of Nintendo's SNES Mini, Sega might well have been inspired by the tried and trusted formula of preloading a bunch of elderly games into what could well be an emulator running inside a retro plastic shell. 
Of course, we have no insight into what software and hardware will be used. Sega hopes to get the device on sale this year in time for the 30th anniversary of the Japanese launch of the original console. European residents with long memories will remember the frustration of having to wait the additional two years until the Mega Drive arrived on UK shores. Hopefully, eager buyers will not face the same delay around this, this time around. Sega followed up the announcement with a tweet giving the device a starting start startlingly startlingly we had this discussion just before the show that we were going to stumble on the word startlingly startlingly so that's why she in the back of your mind you automatically like, started it, laughing say it, say it. <laughs> startlingly startlingly <laughs> that's a difficult one try it three times fast startlingly original and tentative name of mega drive mini there's no word yet on the roster of games to be included but we do expect to see at least one sonic the hedgehog game We've yet to learn the hardware specifications of the device, but it is a quarter of the size of the original and will connect up to a modern television. Great. Hey, sounds a lot like our RetroPie. Sounds exactly like our RetroPie. Sounds like, yeah. Doesn't sounds like a look great like, idea look at, it's like to an, have had. It's like an old Nintendo from the 80s. Yeah. It is a great idea. It seems a little bit late on the uptake. It kind of feels like they saw our show and saw this and thought, hey, we should do that with a Sega Genesis. Right. Or even, to be this honest... This is a Sega Genesis. Exactly. I mean, it's been done before. Play old games on a big TV. I get it. I you, get it. You know what I think, though? What? Is that companies do this. They launch an official rebirth of the console with the games included so that they can rebirth also the copyrights so that people like me and you who have our RetroPie gaming systems on Raspberry Pis we are now in breach of copyright rather than what we are currently, which is um, Just in the middle. using <laughs> legacy software that's no longer sold, and so it's called abandonware. Right. It's available freely downloaded on the internet, on various sources, and so. that kind of thing. So by bringing it back, now all of a sudden, no, 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 we released that in 2018. So Tricky. you are now in violation of that to be using it on your retro pie. Tricky. That's, that's just a theory on my part. I think that that's what the manufacturers are up to. That makes sense to me, actually. That rings, that rings true. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they can sell it on the 30th anniversary and they can make a great. big deal about it. I can't believe it's been 30 it. years. It's crazy. It's been 30 years. I and know. I'm still playing the stuff and enjoying it. I know. It's exciting, and to tell you the truth, I do have a collection of different consoles, yeah. so I'm sure that I'll have one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Reckman. And I'm Robbie Ferguson. Thank you, everyone, for joining us again this week. It's been a lot of fun. I knew it would be. I mean, hey, how often do we get to just play video games and talk about video games and be all retro gaming on ya? So much fun. Hey, please let us know what you think of the show. Send us an email. It's uh, right on our website. If you go to category5.tv, you'll be able to click on Contact Us. Uh, also, we would love to be able to include you in our Patreon page. And what that means is that you support Category 5 TV and our network of shows by contributing a small amount every single month. And by doing that, you help keep us strong, but you also gain access to top secret behind the scenes exclusive content mm -hmm. that is only available to our patrons. So check it out. You can go on to our website, category5.tv, click on support us, and you'll see some ways to do it there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great week. Bye. See ya.